All right, hello everybody. And today we're gonna to be having a look at reflections through linear lines. So what do I mean by that? Let's say we have our X, Y plane right here. And we have some linear relation, let's say like that. And let's say the equation of this line was Y equals AX plus B. And let's say we have some point, that's with coordinates X, Y like so. And if we want to figure out some kind of formula maybe that can to map this point to a new point let's call it x prime y prime and that point is exactly reflected in this straight linear line right here so the method we're going to be using today to do this to solve this problem right here is using linear algebra so using matrices and some linear transformations so let's just go ahead and get started with this thing First of all, we have to figure out what kind of transformations we would like to happen to our points right here. And right here, we're writing these as points, but it would be nice since, since we're using um, matrices to think about these as kind of like vectors. So that's how we have some vector right here, x, y. And we have um, the transformation on that vector, which maps it to some other vector, x prime, y prime, like so. So what exactly was our goal? Our goal was to reflect this x, y point in the line y equals ax plus b. So we want to reflect this across here. And well, this is a bit of a uh, tricky thing to do because we're not only reflecting in a line that passes through the um, origin, but it's also been um, translated up by some constant of b as well. So we have to think about how it can kind of simplify this problem a little bit. Well, imagine we have some point right here and we want to reflect it across the x-axis, maybe to this point right here, then let's say this point again was some point or some vector x, y, then all you need to do is apply a transformation that reflects it in the x-axis. And that transformation is the matrix 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So this column is where i hat lands, or this vector, this unit vector in the x direction. And this vector right here, this column, is where the vector j hat lands. And we want to kind of flip things. So that's why you have j hat turning into 0, negative 1, which is down here. It just flips everything around. So this matrix right here is the matrix that reflects things in the x axis. And I'm going to call this matrix x r. So some reflection in the x axis. So it'd be nice if we can think of some kind of transformation that kind of moves this whole linear line right here and puts it onto the x-axis. Because if we can do that, we can use this matrix right here to do a reflection, and then we can just move everything back where it was. So you see this line right here is kind of tilted a little bit, and you can see that it's kind of tilted by some angle theta right here. So maybe it's a good idea to use a rotation matrix as well to rotate everything so that it's parallel to our x-axis. So if you don't know what the rotation matrix is, it's the matrix cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, and cosine of theta. And I'm gonna call this matrix R theta, so some rotation by theta. So we know how to reflect things in the x-axis, and we know how to rotate things. But notice one crucial thing about using this rotation matrix right here. If we rotate the whole entire plane, this straight line right here, this linear line, doesn't actually go onto the x-axis. It's just going to be a line that's kind of floating above the x-axis. So we need to fix that somehow in order to use our um, x-reflection matrix. So it would be a good idea if we can translate everything down by b a little bit. Because remember this b right here, that's the um, y-intercept right here. And we kind of want to map that to zero first of all. So if we have some point x, y right here, what we want to do first is we want to translate it b units down. So zero, negative b, like so. So that's going to translate everything down by b. And what we want to do to this, since now this line right here passes through the origin, we can rotate things. So we want to rotate the whole entire plane so that this line right here, this linear line, matches up to the x-axis. And to do that, we need to use our rotation matrix. But notice that we want to rotate kind of clockwise, so backwards. So we don't want r theta, we want r theta inverse. Because if we rotated r theta, it would go anti-clockwise, which is the other way. So we want r theta in first, so it maps into the x-axis. And then what we can do, since this whole entire line, this reflection line right here is on the x-axis, we can apply our x-reflection matrix, so x-r. 
And once everything's been reflected on the x-axis, we need to move everything back to where it was originally. So first of all, we need to rotate everything back. So we need to go our theta. So after we've reflected in the x-axis, we need to rotate everything back to its angle it was originally. And then also remember we moved everything down by b. So we also need to add 0b onto that to move everything up. And that is our kind of little formula for x prime, y prime. So this looks like a bit of a mess, but all it's really doing is trying to turn this um, reflection line right here into the x axis so we can use our x reflection transformation. And all we're really doing after that is just undoing what we did. So now all we have to do to solve for x prime, y prime is to expand all of this stuff out right here. So first of all, we have that this is equal to 0b plus r theta xr r theta inverse and then we have the matrix x and y minus b and now let's actually plug the definitions for r theta xi and r theta inverse in so this is equal to 0b plus our rotation matrix r theta which was cosine of theta minus sine of theta sine of theta and cosine of theta and then we have our xi, our reflection in the x-axis, so 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And our theta inverse, so we have to calculate the inverse of this matrix right here. So first computing the determinant, which is AD, which is co cosine squared, minus BC, which is minus minus sine squared, which is plus sine squared. But you see, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, so our determinant is 1. So we don't really have to worry about that. All we really need to do is switch these two cosines, which, well, they'll just stay where they are. And then we need to negate these two entries right here. So this negative sine of theta will turn into sine of theta. And this sine of theta will turn into negative sine of theta. And then that was our r theta inverse. And we still have our x, y minus b. All right, so continuing on right here, let's multiply these two matrices together. So we're going to have 0b plus and multiplying those two together. So we're gonna have first of all on our top row, um, x cos theta, and then plus sine of theta times y minus b, so plus uh, y minus b, sine of theta, and for our bottom one, um, negative x sine theta, and then plus y minus b times the cosine of theta. All right, and now we have to multiply in by this matrix. So, so notice that the top row will stay the same here, and our bottom row, we just need to multiply by negative one. So getting rid of this negative and turning this plus to a negative. So that takes care of this transformation right here. And now we have to multiply in these two ugly matrices together. Um, this is gonna be a bit of a mess. Um, I'll try to fit it in right here. So we have still zero B plus cos theta times all of this junk and then minus sine theta times all of this junk. I'll write that all out. So we'll have x cos squared theta plus y minus b sine theta cos theta, and then minus sine times all of this stuff. So we have minus x sine squared of theta and double negative plus y minus b sine of theta cos of theta. And then now for our bottom entry, we have sine times this top part plus cos times this bottom part. So we have x sine of theta, cos of theta, plus y minus b times the sine squared of theta, now cos times the bottom. So we're gonna have plus x times the sine of theta, cos of theta, minus y minus b, cos squared of theta. So this whole thing here is an absolute mess, but we can actually simplify things a little bit, which is quite nice. Notice that we have y minus b sine times cos, as well as another y minus b sine times cos. We can bring those together, and we have x um, and x right here, which we can factor. Similarly, on the bottom, we have a y minus b common factor right here, and we can combine those two terms right here because they're the same thing. So doing all of that, I'm actually gonna add this zero b on later right now. So we're gonna have, um, first of all, we have this x, we can factor this x out from here and here. So we're gonna have x cos squared minus sine squared, and then plus two y minus b, sine of theta, cos of theta. And then for our bottom, we're gonna have two of these. So two x 
sine of theta, cos of theta. So we have this and so that. And now we have um, y minus b, so we can factor that out. y minus b, and on the inside we have sine squared minus cos squared. So sine squared minus cos squared. And don't forget we have this b that we're going to add on, so we're going to add on that b. And we are actually almost done. We just have to do a little adjustment because if you notice, in our original picture right here, we had the graph of y equals ax plus b. And in our equation right here, we only have b's, we don't have any a's, we have thetas instead. So we want to tr somehow turn our thetas into a's because we're using a gradient, not an angle. So to do that, let's actually go back to the top right here. In order to convert from thetas to a's, we need to know one little fact. Namely, that if we take um, the tangent, so taking the tangent of our angle right here, it's actually going to give us the gradient, which is a. And you can prove it quite easily using some Sokotoa and all that. So taking the tan inverse on both sides, we have theta being equal to the tan inverse of a. And this is nice, but the thing is, in our equations right here, we have sine of theta and cos of theta. We don't have theta by itself. So it would be nice if we can somehow define sine of theta and cos of theta in terms of our a right here. And to do that, it's gonna be nice if we can draw up a little triangle. So if I draw up a triangle right here, you see we have the equation tan of theta being equal to a. So that means if we have maybe some angle theta right here, we can define tan of theta because tan is just opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. And you can think about this a being a divided by one. So that means our opposite would be a and our adjacent would be one. And we can work out this missing hypotenuse right here. It's just a squared plus one. Pythag theorem and so we can finally define the sine of theta which will be um, opposite over hypotenuse which is a over root a squared plus one and the cosine of theta which will be adjacent over hypotenuse which is one over root a squared plus one so now we can use that and kind of rewrite this expression a little bit right here so let's actually move all of this up just so we have um, some more space to work with. So first of all, let's figure out this cos squared and sine squared. I'll actually write that in as well. So we have sine squared being equal to, well, a squared over this square root squared, which is just the argument inside, a squared plus one, and the cos squared of theta being equal to one squared, which is one, this square root squared, which is the thing inside, so a squared plus one. So now we have all of those pieces, we can just substitute it in for here. So now we have our x prime y prime, so I'll just write it down here, x prime y prime being equal to, so first of all we have our x right here times cos squared minus sine squared, so cos squared which is 1 minus a squared, so I'll write it as 1 minus a squared over 1 plus a squared, that's our cos minus sine, and we have 2yb and sine times cos Sine times cos is a times one, which is just a, and these two denominators multiplied together, the square roots will cancel out. So we're gonna get, um, let's write it like this, y minus b, and then two a over a squared plus one. So that's our top part to deal with, our top, our top entry is done. And now for our bottom, we have two times sine times cos. So sine times cos, just like before, we have a divided by a squared plus one, and two of those, so we have, let's see, x times 2a over a squared plus 1 and then now we have y minus b times this thing right here so we have um there should be a plus right here as well so plus y minus b and then sine minus cos is exactly a squared minus 1 so we have a squared minus 1 over a squared plus 1 and don't forget the b right here so have the b hanging around and that should be it actually. This is our little formula for finding the reflection across the line y equals ax plus b. So I've actually put this um, whole entire thing, all these equations and stuff onto Desmos uh, so you can have a look at it. Um, link to the Desmos project will be in the description as well if you want to play around with that. But so uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see everyone next time.